So the last couple of weeks, we've been in a series called The Power of Routine. Um, we've been looking at things that, listen, it, it's, a, it's not a new year yet, but when September starts, it feels like a new year for a lot of us, right? It's kind of like almost the unofficial, you know, New Year's Eve kind of thing, September, Labor Day, like, it's a, it feels like a whole new start. And as we're starting this fall, I want to focus on some things that, we all have routines. Sometimes they're healthy, sometimes they're not, but we all have routines that we do every single day. And just like we have physical routines we go through, we need to have healthy spiritual routines that we're going to continue to be people who grow in a relationship with Jesus. And he gives us the tools we need to continue to do that. He outlines them for us in scripture. And so we've been talking the last couple of weeks, what does that look like in our lives to, to build these healthy spiritual routines into what we do every single day? We talked about reading the word, spending time in God's word. It starts there. That's the foundation of getting to know what God, who God is, right? Because we read the word to get to know God. And he speaks to us through it. We learn about him. We talked about prayer and communicating with God and how important that is and how it goes hand in hand in reading his word. We talked about building even a routine of fasting into your, to your life. We talked about last week, which I know some of you guys have done even in the last week, which is awesome. Whether it was successful or not, you at least tried, which is good. You know, building that in and saying, God, there's stuff I want to, I want to clear out my, the clutter in my soul to hear from you better, to connect to you better, to, to pray for what you want in my life. And fasting is one of the, the quickest ways and the healthiest ways of doing that, it's just cleaning out the clutter so we can hear from God better. And so, if you guys have tried it this week, I applaud you. It's been really good. <laughs> just, you know, so it's, it's not easy. And it's not easy to start, but it's, it's a healthy, really healthy thing. So those are some of the things we talked about so far. And this week I want to talk about something as we continue on building into our routines. That it's kind of become a buzzword recently in our culture. And that's that idea of community. Now community is something you hear a lot about. If you look around, if you, if you look on Facebook, if you look all over the place, there's all kinds of polls on people to be involved in community, right? I think a lot of people know they have a desire to be in community. We just don't really know exactly what that looks like for it to be healthy, right? I mean, you can go anywhere and see that they're trying to get you into groups or connect with people that you like to do things with, but is that really community? Now, even the way we do community nowadays has changed drastically because of social media and what we have going on. They just did a poll recently where people are actually saying it's down, I think, from 49% a couple years ago to 36% that people would rather talk to somebody digitally, meaning on a screen, than face-to-face. So people are even changed how they desire the community. They actually said, I would, I would rather talk to a person over my phone or over my computer than to sit down face to face with them. And that's counting as community. They're looking for community digitally. You have apps like House Party and Kick and all these things that people are signing up for to video chat with a bunch of their friends at one time, Facebook messenger groups and all those things that people are in because they're looking for a community. But does that really accomplish the goal of what community actually is? the way God designed it. See, I don't know if you guys have ever had or been around little kids when they get a Christmas present. Right? I know when our boys were little, a lot of times what parents do is they, at least what we did, is we spent a lot of time picking out really cool things we thought our kids would love, like toys they would love and things, and just imagine when they open it up, they're going to just be so great, it's an awesome thing, they're going to love it. You know, and you get to Christmas morning, and they open up the present, and they take it out, and what do they do? They set it aside, and they play with the box, right? Anybody been there? Anybody seen to have kids do it? You did that? It's, it's, it's always astounding to me. As parents are like, this is going to be amazing. They're going to love this toy. And then they play with the wrapping paper. And you're like, I could have saved all this money. Just wrapping paper. Just give them a box, wrap a wrapping paper. They'd be happy, right? Because they get the gift, but they're not really using the gift the way it was intended. They're content just to play with the, the appearance of the gift. And I feel like that's kind of what we do in community. Community is a gift from the Lord for us. A gift for us to be able to connect with other people and grow into who we are. But a lot of times, we're content with just playing with the box. We're content with just playing with the wrapping paper. We don't want to get to the actual gift. It looks better. It's easier for us just to play with the packaging and actually understand what the real gift is for. Because I'll tell you, community is not easy. Community can be painful. Community has a cost to it. But true biblical community looks different than just your buddies at the gym. It looks different than just all your friends on Facebook. It looks different than just whatever group you're involved. The true biblical community has some pieces to it that really are for, designed to help us grow as people that connect to our soul at a different level than you're going to find in any other kind of capacity. So uh, there, there was a, a professor um, 
he's a professor at George Fox University. He wrote a book about, about biblical community, and I want to put a quote up there from him as how he defines it. And he says this, he says, Christian community is simply sharing a common life in Christ. It moves us beyond the self-interested isolation of private lives and beyond the superficial social contacts that pass for Christian fellowship. The biblical idea of community challenges us instead to commit ourselves to life together as the people of God. So that definition right there is what I'm working with as far as what is biblical community? Life together as the people of God. Because that last part, people of God, determines whether it's biblical community or just a good community group. There's a difference in that. It's the life together as the people of God that determines biblical community. And here's the thing, I think deep down, that's really what we're looking for. Whether you believe in Jesus today, or just checking church out, or wherever you're at, we're glad you're here. But I think deep down, for all of us, we really ask somebody, what they're really craving is biblical community, connecting to the creator of their soul at a deeper level. And here's the reason we crave it. Because we were created for it. So I don't know if you know this, but God is a God of community. If you go back to the beginning in Genesis, when he created Adam and Eve, what does he say? He says, let us make him in our, let's, let's make man in our image. Father, Son, Holy Spirit it is the Trinity, is the, the God that they live in community, perfect community. God is a God of community. And so when, we, when he created human beings, that imprint of community is on our soul because we're made by a communal God who understands how important it is. And so it is in us, it designed us to be a part of who we are, to be in community. When, they created, when God created Adam, what did he say a, little, a few verses later? It's not good for him to be alone, to create Eve. He understands the need we have for each other. We were created to have that kind of community. We have to look at and understand why why is it so important to make this a part of our routine? Because we were created for it. But the flip side is when we don't have it, man, do we feel it. All right? Loneliness is one of the biggest epidemics we have in our country right now. Which seems mind-boggling when you think about all the ways we have to connect to each other today. Because you think about all the social internet, the internet and social media contacts we have, and the thousands of friends we have on Facebook, and the, all the different apps we use to connect, but yet there's so many people are still saying they're more lonely than ever before in their entire life when you look at our culture and you go, how? How does that happen? And then the result of it is we have people that isolate themselves. When we pull ourselves aside and we think we can do it on our own, we can make it all by ourselves, and isolation has proven through scientific studies that it will kill you. Like, because if you're alone too long, it has negative health impact on your body, it has mental impacts, all of these things build up in us. And you go, oh, well, let's, you know, you can do this, you can do that. That's because we were created by God to be in community. When we starve that part of ourselves, it hurts. It does. That's so why loneliness is one of those things that people fight so much, even though we connect, because they're not getting real biblical community. They're not getting real community that they were actually created for. You're getting the wrapping. You're getting the box, if you will, but you're not getting the real gift of community. And we, we settle far too often for the rapping rather than what God actually intended for us. Because what he intended for us is a joy. It is, it is a blessing. It is life-giving. It is amazing. But we have to go after it. So why is community so important? One of the major reasons it's so important is because it helps us to become more like Jesus. Right? We need each other to do that. Hebrews chapter 10 talks about what it says this. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 to 25 says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess. For he who promised is faithful. We just sang about hope, right? That hope that we can hold on to. It says, And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. And then it goes on to say, Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. This is talking about community, biblical community. And the fact is you can't have that without other people. Trying to have community by yourself doesn't work. <laughs> You're like, I like myself, I need myself and I, we're the group. Like, no, that doesn't count, it doesn't work. We need each other to be able to do this. And it's not always fun in biblical community. Let me tell you, like that verse says, let us spur one another on. Now, anybody ever seen spurs? Um, they, you know what they're used for? <laughs> They get the horse moving, but it's not fun for the horse when you use them, right? 
He doesn't like being kicked in the side with something sharp to get him, get him moving down and get him moving the way you want him to. Spurring can be uncomfortable sometimes. Being in community with other people can be uncomfortable sometimes. But here's the key, when you do it well, you can have those spurring kind of conversations out of love. Now I think one of the reasons a lot of us avoid Christian community is we've been in bad Christian communities before. We've been a part of groups where the spurring was not done out of love. It was done out of, you know, jealousy, it was done out of anger, it was done out of judgment, and we felt that out of the wrong way, and so we trained ourselves to avoid it. That's not what real Christian community is. If you've ever felt that from another believer from the church, I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to apologize on behalf of those who may have done that to you and just say that's not what Jesus had in mind. That's not what he intended from Christian community. The spurring is always based out of love. But when you love somebody and you know you are loved for who you are, you can have the tough conversations that need to be had, even if it's painful a little bit. And that's something a lot of times we avoid, is having the tough conversations. We don't want to hurt somebody's feeling. We don't know how they're going to see it. But that is actual love. Proverbs tells us that wounds from a friend are better than kisses from an enemy. <laughs> right? We can trust those because they know our friend loves us. In biblical community, we can spur one another on even when it's uncomfortable because we know that we care for it and we're loved. And it spurs on to love and good deeds. It spurs on to grow, which is what that means. Right? Because if our goal as followers of Jesus is to become more like Jesus, sometimes we need a good kick to do that, right? <laughs> But the only one that needs a good godly kick in the pants and comes to the front. Like, we all need that sometimes. So listen, I know there's stuff I should be doing, and I'm not doing it. And i got to be honest, I have no good reason that I'm not doing it, other than I'm just not doing it. <laughs> and I need someone to encourage me and come alongside me and say, hey, listen, dude, uh, we got to talk because there's some things here that need to change. I want to help you do that. Out of love. Sparring is not easy, but it's important that we find that in the biblical community because... Community is all about transformation, and transformation equals movement. If you're not moving, if you're not changing, then you're not really doing it. So community helps spur us on to who God's creating us to be in His image. Community also helps us kind of knock the edges off, right? I don't know if you guys have ever done drywall before, but I've done a lot of drywall in the past couple years in our house as we've been remodeling. And after you get the drywall up, the next step is you always have to tape the seams, and then mud the seams with spackle and get it smooth because if you don't get that right, the wall looks all wonky and wavy and all that stuff. But as you do the taping and the mudding, you have to do several layers of the mud. Now, if you're really good, you can do that without going back and sanding more than once. But if you're like me, it involves a lot of sanding because I never did it right the first couple times. And even the professionals will tell you one of the things you have to do before you go back and do the finishing, you have to go back and knock the edges off. All that means is that you're going to have little ripples, you're going to have bumps, you're going to have chunks, you're going to have things that if you don't go back and get them off the wall, the finished product will not look good. You'll be able to see them once you paint them. You have to go back through sandpaper and sand them off. You have to go back through your stocking light and scrape them off. You have to knock the edges off for it to be how it's designed to be. Community is a great way that God uses each other to knock our edges off. To say, listen, like you might have some big edges, you might have some small ones, but when we come together, it helps us knock the edges off each other to really be able to be the product God wants us to be, the people that God wants us to be, the finished product when we're moving towards Him that we can be because of each other. Help us knock the edges off. That's an important part of what we do. That's a spurring on of each other that's important. Now, it's all, but this is something, like I said, people are oftentimes afraid of this kind of community. But we know we need it. We crave it. I have a friend who um, travels the world speaking, doing leadership training, and, and working with church leaders and business leaders all over the world. And uh, a couple years ago, he had the opportunity to travel to Ireland to do a conference for, for pastors in Ireland. And there was several hundred pastors from the, from the country that were there for this training. And when he travels, he always brings people with him. He always brings a team of other people, other ministers, other, other people he's led, other people he's friends with that do ministry together. He always brings them with him. So don't, don't worry about that yet. Um, so what you do when, you, when he goes in the thing, he stands up and he starts talking, but he always introduces his team to everyone else who's there. And so when he stood up at this conference in Ireland, he introduced himself, he started talking, he invited those other people that were with him up, those other three or four people. And he started talking about the relationship he had with these other people. People he'd been friends with, people he'd been in ministry with, people he'd been in biblical community with for a long time. And he was just sharing his story about how they met, not intending that to be what he ended up talking about at this conference. 
But after sharing about the kind of relationship that he had with his friends, the kind of community he had, the leader of the conference pulled him aside and said, can you just talk about that for our leaders? Can we can all the other stuff you're going to train people on? Can you just talk about how you do that? Because we don't have that. And, and so many people, all these pastors and ministry, they, they don't have what you just described. So can you, can you help us for the next how many are days there within this conference? Can you just talk about community and, and skip the, the other topic? Because we need that. We know we need it. But we don't know how to get it because we're afraid of it. Because one of the biggest issues is trust. They're like, we don't trust each other. We recognize that. We want to move into that. So when you told me that, I was for it because I can like, I get that. It's that idea of like, we want it, but we don't know how to get it. We want it, but we don't, we don't want to step into it because we have to learn to trust. We have to learn to forgive. We have to learn to, to be, be okay with having our edges knocked off. See, community helps us grow in so many ways. It helps us learn how to deal with conflict. Okay? Right? If you spend enough time with a few people, you're going to run into some things you don't always agree on. All right? It's just going to happen. Sometimes it's part of knocking the edges off as you maybe see things a little differently. But it helps you learn how to deal with it in a healthy way. Not the kind where you run away from it and just hope, you know, just cover your ears and be like, ah, ah, ah. There's no conflict. I don't see conflict. Right? The unhealthy way. Just ignoring it. But it helps you learn to deal with it head on. Community helps you learn to carry other people's burdens. That's one of the beautiful benefits of the biblical community and following Jesus in that way. Is it helps you learn to care for other people. When someone in your group is suffering, when someone in your community needs help, when someone needs something, you come alongside them and you support them and you get to know them and, and the needs they have and you carry them with them. It's also where we learn how to use our gifts. In case you were wondering, all of you are gifted, right? When you come into a relationship with Jesus and you, and you, and you accept that sacrifice he made for you and accept his grace in your life, you, you get the gift of the Holy Spirit. And it also says you're gifted in lots of different ways that God wants to use for his kingdom. There's nobody who doesn't get that. You guys all have gifts and talents and abilities that God wants to work through you using it. And when you're in community, you begin to discover what those are and how to use them. You also begin to discover what they're not. Because sometimes we think we have a gift that we don't. And sometimes it has, takes people in community to help us figure that out. And sometimes that's those conflicts we have to have the hard ones with people and go, yeah, mm, I love you. That's not your thing. <laughs> it's okay. We'll find the thing for you. But that's not what you think. It's not as good as you think it is. I don't think it's what you think it is. Right? Like that's, that's what community can do for you. It's a community that we begin to worship and pray together and carry each other's burdens. So we learn about forgiveness and healing and all those things that our soul craves. But it only happens when we come together the way Jesus called us to come together, to spur one another on. So we find encouragement, like it says in verse 25. Let us not give up meeting together. Again, we need people to do this. But let us encourage one another. And all the more as we see the day approaching. Anybody not like to be encouraged? Just show hands. Didn't think so. I have yet to meet someone who's like, please, 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 don't encourage me. Like, I don't need it. I don't want it. I'm good being miserable. Right? Leave me alone. No, nobody says that. We need encouragement. Whether you believe in Jesus or not, we're created to need it. We need it. Right? Like, that is an important part of what we are. It feeds our soul. We need it from each other. And community is where we find that. To come along with another and say, let's not just do the hard stuff. Let's do the fun stuff. Let's have fun together. Let's celebrate together. Community is for celebration. Right? Some of the best memories you probably have over your life, if you look back, are back or celebration times. Birthdays, anniversaries, weddings, parties. Like, those are the good memories we have. Like, community is for celebrating the goodness of God together within each other. Let's have fun together. See, that's what we're created for. Encouraging one another. And encouraging each other not to give up. Because again, we give up, it leads to isolation. It leads to loneliness. It leads to us feeling like, oh, we don't fit in, we don't belong, nobody. Let me tell you something. Here at this church, at Grace, three of the things we say all the time is anyone's welcome. Everyone's welcome. No matter where you come from, what you look like, anywhere, it doesn't matter. Everyone is welcome here. Nobody's perfect. We don't expect anybody to come in and have it all together. Because I don't have it all together. Nobody has it all together. We don't expect anybody to be perfect to come here. And anything is possible. We believe that God can do anything, at any time, in all of our lives. And we believe that happens through community, together. Encouraging one another, finding a safe place to do that. So we hope that you find grace that place to do. 
Anybody know a lot about redwood trees? Good. Okay, good. Glad to be there. I just want to make sure there wasn't somebody that was like, it's stuck these things before I share on this, right? So if you want to put that picture back up there, Jim, if you haven't ever seen a California redwood, that's what they look like. These trees are monsters. I mean, that's, that's a person at the base of that tree, just for reference. That's how big these things are. Okay, now they grow mainly in Northern California on the West Coast. Now, if you see these trees, which we were hoping to see this summer, our vacation plans changed, so we haven't seen them yet. But when you see them, they're just huge. And if you were to think, if there's any tree you've ever seen that doesn't need anything, like this is the monsters, the Mac Daddy trees. It's like the toughest thing around. Like that's a big tree, it doesn't need anything. It is good by itself. You would think it would be a redwood. It's a thing just dwarfs every, every other thing. But here's the thing about redwood trees. Their root system is really shallow. Like you would think it goes really deep and anchors really deep. No. Their root system is actually really shallow. You know how they stay up and keep from falling over? Their roots intertangle with all the other redwoods around them, and they hold each other up. Isn't that crazy? That's why you never see a redwood by itself. You never see it out, oh, there's just a random redwood out here. You never see a redwood off on its own. It always grows in a forest or a grove of other trees because it won't make it on its own. It needs the roots to be tangled together with those around it to keep it up and keep it from falling over. That is what God created biblical community to be for us. We need each other because we cannot make it on our own. When the storms come and the things that want to topple you over, that's when you rely on those around you to help you through this. That is biblical community. That is what helps you become more like Jesus, more like our Savior, more like the one we're following. And say, we need each other to do that. Because there will be storms. There will be times. And if you're by yourself and you have no, no one to help wrap your roots with, it's very easy to get taken out very easy. Biblical community allows us to have our roots connected, so when we do it, we can survive those things. Even though we might look tall and great and all okay on the outside, like a giant redwood, deep down we know we need <laughs> that support. We need to make it a routine part of our life to be in that kind of community. But it's not just about becoming like Jesus, because community also means a bigger need than that. It reminds us that we are part of something much bigger. We are part of something that's a much bigger purpose than just ourselves. Right? In, in, in John chapter 13, there's this verse that says, A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have loved one another. This idea of community and doing it God's way and showing these things, it's not just about us getting our needs met. It's not just about us and our own little group of, you know, I got my Christian friends and I'm okay. No, no, no. Community is, is about showing the love of Jesus to the world around. It's never just about us isolating ourselves and doing our God thing until he returns. It's about us growing our faith together so we can show everyone else just how much he's cares about them, too. And how we do that communicates a bigger language. It's a bigger purpose that we have as believers than just what we need and what we want. So community actually involves us in something much bigger than ourselves. Much bigger than ourselves. An important part of ourselves. And we understand that in our culture, right? Because we do that all the time. Like I said earlier, why things like house party and kick and all these other things are growing is because we want to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. I mean, hello, Kickstarter. You guys heard of Kickstarter out there. That's one of those things where someone come up with an idea, they can go on there, they can put it on Kickstarter, and then anybody who wants to contribute to that idea and be part of whatever it is that you're making. It's like a small little way to be a part of something bigger than yourself. They give to someone's Kickstarter campaign. Maybe some of you have done that for something you thought was cool. You know, nowadays, it used to be when you watch a TV show, you would just sit there and watch it. And if you had someone in the room with you, you would talk to them about that show. That was pretty much all the, all the way you would communicate about the show. Nowadays, you can be watching the show, and then you can be on your phone or your computer, live tweeting with the actors from that show while you're watching that show. We're a part of a community who's discussing the themes of that show while it's going on. I mean, you can be connected to a much larger community even right in the moment. And it appeals and speaks to us because we know that we were created for something bigger than just making it through life on our own. And that's why that, that's been growing and people have been plugging into that so to get the bigger purpose. But let's not miss, for believers, for those of us who follow Jesus, the bigger purpose is not just to, to have a bunch of friends. The bigger purpose is to show the love of Jesus. And it's because of that that people will know that Jesus is real. I mean, I don't know if that, that let that sink in for a second. He's saying right here that it's because of how we treat each other, 
how we live our lives together in front of others, that people will believe if he's real or not. Believe that we actually believe in him by how we do community together. It speaks volumes to people when they see us actually living these things out and finding a place where it's like, wait a second, I can, I can like not be judged for my past with you guys and you can still love me? That's, that's, that's weird, that doesn't happen anymore. Like, I can actually come in and be, be honest with you, and you're not going to, like, reject me because of how I look or where I... That's, that's weird. I don't, I don't find that. You know, why? why? Why are you willing to do that for me? Well, because Jesus did it for us. It speaks and communicates in greater ways than we even realize how we interact with the community that we're a part of. Because it's never just about us. It's never about us. Church was not created just for us to have a safe place to go to. It was about us and always for the sake of others. It's about us coming to find, to know Jesus, to grow in Jesus for the sake of other people, to do the same. And that's the bigger purpose behind Christian community. There's, a, there's an African proverb that I love that goes like this. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. I love that statement. Because many of us on our own, yeah, we could get a lot more done probably. We could go fast. We get get to our end goal a lot better on our own. Get there, you know, just move, just do my, let me do myself, let me do myself. But a lot of times what happens is we burn out. Or a lot of times what happens is along that way when something does happen, we have no support. So we start off really fast and then just a lot. But if you want to make it through life, if you want to go far, if you want to bring the kingdom impact that we can have through, you go together. Together is not always fast. It's not always neat and clean. A lot of times it's messy. A lot of times there's things you have to work on along the way. It doesn't get you to the end goal as fast as you would like. It's not a project you check off. But together is where strength is. And 1 Corinthians 12 tells us that we are better together than we are apart. We are stronger together than we are apart. We are, we are part of the body and we need each other to accomplish this goal. So I just want to encourage you guys. Biblical community, if we want to continue to be serious about following Jesus and showing that to a hurting world, we need to be part of the biblical community. That's part of our routine, how we do life. Not just every now and then, not just on Sunday mornings, but plugging in the people who are going to help you do this life together. God, the people are going to do life together as part of God's family. It's an important part of how we grow. The same guy that I quoted from earlier, I want to end by closing, or close by, by reading this quote from him. It says, the practice of Christian community quite simply, makes the gospel live into reality. When we live out our faith together, it's like the gospel comes to life. It's more than just someone telling it to you from up front. It's actively engaging and people seeing the gospel in, in practice. It embodies a specific personal way of life together in Christ. It strengthens us to live the life to which we were called, and it conveys God's life and power to the world at large. And it is necessary. It's not an option. It's not something we can say, and I can take it or leave it necessary. And without experiencing such life together, we will not discover how wonderful the news about Jesus really is. I love that, because it's saying, if you are not willing to plug into a biblical community, or you have not, you're missing something. There's a part of growing in Jesus you will not discover or find any other way than through spending time with each other. And here's the thing with biblical community. Sometimes the only thing you have in common with the person you're in community with is Jesus. <laughs> let's, let's just be honest. It, and that's, that's the most unique and amazing things about being a Christ follower. Is sometimes our community is like, you, the person you're sitting next to, you have absolutely nothing in common with except for Jesus. And that is awesome. And that is okay. And that is good because that's what heaven's going to be like. Right? Because you're going to be there with all kinds of people that you're like, well, I normally would have been in, in you know, a cycling group with that one, or I would have done a cooking class with that one. It's not what it's about. Right? We get to learn to love other people at the foundation of Jesus loving us first. That's what makes the little community so awesome and so unique. Very hard to find anywhere else. Because if you think about it, every other group you join is based on something that you have in common with everybody else in that group, usually. The people you want, it's, it's, it's about Jesus. And he can break down any barrier, any divide, any racial anything. He can divide and get level playing field all the way across, but it doesn't matter. And we can truly do this together. And move into the world where they say, man, that is only possible. Those two people hanging out and getting along, <laughs> that is only Jesus. 
right? Because that would not happen anywhere else. And you can say, yeah, yeah, you're right. It is. <laughs> it is. It's only Jesus. It's on my own. I wouldn't be able to do it. On our own, wouldn't you do this? But it conveys a message of hope to the world. So as, as we close, I just want to challenge you, if you can, we're starting something this fall called Grace Groups, which is our small group ministry. And they're going to be starting up in a couple of weeks. We have three or four. We have four of them going on right now that we're going to be launching. Um, and if you want to be a part of a biblical community like this, I would encourage you to go to our website and sign up for being one of them. They meet at different times during the week. We have one group in particular that's going through Alpha, which is, if you've never done Alpha, we'll talk a little bit more about it in the future. But it's for people who may not even necessarily believe in Jesus or just maybe you're just starting this journey in your faith. It's a great time to talk about whatever questions you have about that. But we have this concept. We want to be in community together more than just on Sunday mornings. Like, I love you guys. I'm glad we're here on Sundays. But again, doing life together as with God's people is more than just a Sunday thing. We need each other way more than just for an hour on Sunday morning. So I'd encourage you to pray about joining one of those groups that we're starting. Look them up online. You can see where they meet, when they meet, and just, you know, who you can contact and find out more information. But if you can do it, please do. Because this idea of biblical community is something that it will change the world if we do. And it's like I said, it's not easy. And it has a cost. Sometimes we have to sacrifice our other schedules, our other plans we'd rather do. Right? There's a price to pay to have this. It doesn't come easy. And the reason that is is because Satan and the world love to have you not have this. And so they'll throw every distraction, everything at you to get you to just play with the wrapping. Right? To get you to set aside the gift and be content with the box. Like, yeah, it looks like I have community every now and then. It looks okay. We miss a real amazing gift the biblical community is for us and for those around us. So I challenge you to pray about that and to do what's necessary to make it work for your schedule. Because it really is what we were created for. So as the worship team comes back up, I'm going to pray. If you have any questions about those groups, please see me. You know, I want to help you be able to do that. But I encourage you. This is a great place to plug in who you were created to be. This is a great place to plug in who Jesus is and to grow in your relationship with him. So we pray. God, I thank you for today. Thank you for the, the fact that you are a God of community and you've called us into that and you've created this gift to give us so that we can know you more and we can know who we are because of each other and how we do life together. Oh, so thank you, God. Thank you for giving us that gift. Help us not to be content with just playing with the appearance of it, but to really enjoy the gift and dig in and use the way you call us to use it, God. Not just for ourselves, but for the sake of the world around us. Because they need to see that that is a possibility. Lord, people are dying to see that they can be cared about, they can be loved just for who they are because of you. So we be people, we be a courageous community of believers here at Grace, God, that are not afraid to do this kind of life together.